Hi and welcome to another MoTeC webinar. My name is Pete Swinney and today we're going to do our live tuning section of our Introduction to M1 Tuning webinar series. But just before we go on to the dyno itself, just wanted to show you what we're working with today. Uh, this is a picture of the Hilux we've got on the dyno. We've got a dyno pack, a chassis dyno in our workshop and so this is the 1KD. It's the not the very latest version which is the 1GD, this is the 3 litre 1KD Hilux. We had this, I don't know, a year or so. Uh, we've put a lot of sensors on it and done a lot of our R&D and testing for our diesel packages. So just thought I'd show you our setup uh, under the bonnet. Um, so just going through some of the things that we're measuring here. Um, and if we have a look, so we have a compressor outlet pressure. So because of so many sensors, pressures and temperatures and things on the engine, we've got to put accurate channel names to them so we can keep track of them properly. So the compressor outlet pressure, and we have a look here. That's we've got a little five bar map sensor here. There's the outlet of the turbo, and there's the maps map sensor in there. Compressor outlet temperature. There's the K-type thermocouple just going in out of sight there. Turbo speed, so the green and black twisted wire there goes over the back onto the compressor housing. And there's the uh, divider that divides up the turbo speed so we can read it into the ECU. Turbine inlet pressure, so turbine is the exhaust size, so side, so that's the inlet pressure. So we've got the inlet and the outlet pressure here. There's two more five bar map sensors measuring bef pressure before and after the, t the exhaust side of the turbo. So the pressure afterwards of course measures back pressure of the exhaust system and the pressure before the turbine is measuring the exhaust, what we would think of normally as the exhaust back pressure. So, uh, so you can see that uh, Pete, our workshop man, made a reasonable job, had put some steel uh, brake line in fact I think rotated that round to take the vibration out of it and then off to the pressure sensor. So that's pressure in and out of that. Turbine in and out as well, so the, the, the temperature. So two more thermocouples going in. So one before the exhaust housing and one after. So turbine inlet temp and turbine outlet temp. And as I said in a previous webinar, quite interesting to see how much the Temp ex the t temperature after the turbo is affected by the vane position. So as the vanes close tighter, you can see the energy being used in the turbo rather than being passed through and out and to be measured by the, the final temp sensor. All right, so that's on the right-hand side of the engine. On the left-hand side, we put in a larger than factory boost pressure sensor. Again, another five bar map sensor. That's it up there. We measured lift pressure. So this is, there's the uh, manual priming pump and fuel filter. And after that, on the way to the high pressure pump, we've teed off there and we're measuring the lift pressure to the pump. Uh, the lambda, there's the LTC there, lambda sensor of course is on the other side. Measuring the crankcase pressure also, so that pressure sensor under there is actually, there's a hose goes off and it tees into where the dipstick is. So we can see if we've got excessive crankcase pressure, we can put alarms on that uh, and so forth. There's the 888, so all our temps, uh, K-type thermocouples we can put all over the engine, in and out of intercooler, in and out of before to, before the inlet or before the compressor, after the compressor, before the turbine, after the turbine, after the intercooler, anywhere we want to run it, oil temperature. When we're using an E888 of course we've got eight thermocouple inputs so it gives us good a good number of things we can measure and keep an eye on things and uh, the log data that we get from here is really useful not only now but in the future we can see the behavior of all, all things and relating to one another. Okay, so that's that. So just to review what we're going to do today uh, and I mean if uh, I was to do an entire tune on a diesel engine it would take hours so we're just going to do the basics. I'm not going to do much with at this in this webinar with tuning our um, 
pilots and posts and things like that. We're just going to kind of simulate if you've got your hands on a diesel engine for the first time, there's pretty much other than basic setup, nothing uh, relevant in the tables. I'm going to zero all the tables out or put some really crude start numbers in the fuel pressure and we'll just go through and get this engine to make some reasonable power, something like factory plus a little bit. And so to show you that happening live um, and the process that you go through. So just quickly to review that, our main aim is to actually run the engine and get our pedal position, our nominal table to 100%. So once we can get our, our foot flat, we can see how rich or lean the engine is going to be. We can see what our boost control is like and we can see what our fuel pressure control is like. So we really want to start at a conservative uh, maximum fuel limit number, get flat, uh, get our pedal to the floor, see what that does is it and just basically if it's richer than 1.2 then it's too much fuel um, but if it's making no boost then we need to to get our boost control sorted out so apply maximum fuel at any given engine speed via that using the pedal as the as the method to apply the fuel and then basically tune the boost control to, to make a nice conservative amount of boost um, lift the boost to make it leaner, then add more fuel to uh, make more power, then add more boost to make it leaner again, then add more fuel to make more power, uh, and keeping an eye on the fuel pressure along the way. So they're kind of the big ticket items. Keep it leaner than 1.2 at all times. Keep the boost under control. Keep the fuel pressure under control and seesaw your way up by adding fuel, adding boost, adding fuel, adding boost until you get the kind of power that you're after. Alright, there'll be some other things pop up along the way I'm sure, but that's you know that's our our overall objective there, keeping an eye on e exhaust temps and things as well. Um, but just to get the thing in shape so that it drives reasonable and you've got something uh, something as a starting point for your fine tuning later, that's the process. Alright, so we'll move down to the dyno, so bear with me and I'll just switch over to do that. Okay, we're back and now we're in the vehicle on the dyno in our workshop. So the Toyota Hilux has got our plug and play M150 solution fitted and you can see we're connected and live with the ECU. So now I've gone, I'll just go through we've gone and taken out all the tuning, not all the tuning tables, but tried to simulate what uh, a, a start file might look like for you guys. Uh, so we'll just quickly go through that now. So here's our nominal, which is our pedal table. It's just a dead, dead linear uh, table you can see. Um, our fuel mass limit is just, I'll put in just a flat 50 here. Just as a starting point, we go to our EMS page here and our engine efficiency table. We're probably not going to go into that too much today, but I've just made that 90. But um, we'll look at the difference between the airflow meter and the calculated uh, engine charge channel via the efficiency table. We'll be able to look at those two values later on. Here's our smoke limiting tables here, the fuel mixture minimum I've brought all the way down to 0.2 lambda so richer than it will ever need to be uh, and what that means is the limit of fuel will end up being our fuel mass limit here so that'll end up being our our supplier of the fuel so going back um, we want all of these tables, these limit tables to have numbers in them that won't affect us while we could try and set our fuel mass limit table numbers to be correct. So in here this is the fuel mass limit smoke table and we've got 900 milligrams in here so nothing that's going to get in the way of us achieving our goal which is to get that fuel mass limit table set. Alright on to timing so I put a very very simple curve in here you can see it's nothing like what we looked at earlier 
and yeah, just starting at five and going to eleven degrees. No, no damage is going to occur, and um, just a good starting point, just for something for us to work with. Boost uh, the main aims, so we've got that, so that when we get to our fifty milligrams, we're just aiming for one number here, and that is eighty kPa. All right, so 0.8 bar of boost, and our feed forward point for that, we have an 80 kPa sight. I'll just F6 this to make it a little bit easier to see. And so there's that standard sort of shape that is in our start file, so you can soon uh, copy and paste this shape over if you're doing a Mazda or a Mitsubishi or something else as, uh, as your starting point. And at the beginning, when I came in here, these numbers down here were all 100. So I've taken, um, you know, 30 or 40 numbers off this to give us a starting point. Our fuel pressure aim, I've left that the same. And I mean, to me, this is what you would use as a starting point for your your engine. And you can transfer or migrate it over from this start file or a start file similar to this, which will be on our website. 186 MPA should be reasonable for most engines as a starting point. You might want to lift that later, but starting point wise, that's reasonable. All right, and that's it for now. That's all we need to, to do. All right, just before I move on, we've got alarm set up here. So I turn on my coolant temp alarm. I've got a high air temperature one to let me know what's going on here. Exhaust temperature if it goes over 830. Uh, over boost and over speed on our turbos so we're keeping an eye on that and I did configure some shortcut keys so if I press F5 I can toggle between the fuel mass fuel pressure and timing table so it allows me to move around very quickly F6 we leave exclusive for uh, full screening the component you're on F7 I'm moving between the two boost control setup screen so we've got our tuning setup workbook and our tuning workbook so one of them is the common common stuff that you're going to deal with all the time while you're uh, tuning and then if I flip down to the tuning setup workbook this is all the other boost control stuff that's usually you know kind of set up once and forget or either that or it's a little bit uncommon so so F7 allows me to flip between those two workbooks quickly and um, and as I say normally I'm doing that some, maybe something related to boost. Okay and F8 is just toggling between my air mass which most of the time is just going to be my engine efficiency I might be updating and my all calibrate screen. Okay um, so let's get into it. So I will press F five to get over to here. I will need to see that my lambda is working. So here I can see my lambda is online. It's lambda 10 because the engine's not going. Um, engine charge stuff that's all just sitting paused at the moment. All right so we'll just turn the key and start it. All right and we're away. We can see I've got oil pressure. I've got fuel pressure 28 MPA and it's running away there now. Okay, so you can see our injector calibrations aren't certainly not very good at idle and that really doesn't affect you because you're not really using any of this lambda estimate channel uh, that much uh, at low engine loads. You're really only using that channel when you are looking to um, prevent smoke and things like that. So it's very, very difficult to get the uh, injector calibrations perfect at idle. So. Alright, um, alright, so I suppose we'll just, uh, I've got the dyno, we're going to do this testing at 2000 revs and I've got our dyno set to 2000, so provided we keep an eye on everything, I actually like to go over to the boost uh, screen and I've got the, I know there's a bit on here, but on this page here I can see my boost aim and my boost pressure at this point here so they're one of my concerns and then straight above that I have my lambda and uh, so I can see that I'm not getting too rich so 
really my my key things to worry about is am I over boosting uh, or and am I going too rich there they're the things I'm worrying about initially um, I suppose we could have a quick look at fuel pressure and I didn't actually I'll take you to the fuel pressure control side so that is actually on our uh, setup workbook so I can press F7 twice and I'm down to the setup workbook see down here tuning setup and if I go across to fuel pressure we could actually fix some of this stuff now um, so I'll press F6 so you can see so we've got our aim table here and the thing that we're wanting to get straight on to is the feed forward table so here's the feed forward table I took our nice nicely shaped feed forward table out and just put a number of 29 in there all right I can tell you a flat table of 29 isn't going to do the job if I press the space bar you can see we're just hovering around a almost or very little fuel flow here at 850 so I'll press off F6 again now and what I'm looking to see here on my control side is what is the I'll just make this F6 so you can see it okay and my integral here I will just pause it so you can see what happened so that's push T and it pauses the data we can come back okay and as we started it here if we have a look we've started the engine and our aim just get rid of that one so pretty much went straight to the aim which is 29 MPA okay we can see our feed forward number is 29 but the actual control number that what we what the system is using is 24 and so it's achieved that by using integral of an integral component of minus minus 3.8 so it's basically pulled 3.8 out of the uh, from the feed forward to get what we wanted so if I double click drag click here so you can see we've cranked the fuel pressure's gone up it's immediately over it's too high so it ended up at 58 and you'll see the integral starting to pull that um, duty cycle down until we get our aim alright so straight away now we can fix that error and this basically is the process entirely just the same thing at different load points uh, different engine speeds so we're going to do the idle point here right now so I can F6 this back so you can see it's still on the right hand side there and I can see that right now I can move some things around it's a lot to see so I'll go F6 here and space bar and so that number I wanted to be there was 24 okay so if we just F6 go back and have a look all right so the integral is pulling out nearly four percent and there's our number here now that you've seen it in full screen we can see the one we're looking for our control number is 24 so we come over to here and at eight this number here needs to be 24 form all right so the engine changed then because all of a sudden the integral was pulling three odd out we can have a look and that was too little so the fuel pressure would have changed so if I f6 and T all right and you can actually see here that we're we're very very close all right and that's a reasonable data point there now so we'll come back and as a starting point maybe we'll make this whole bottom row 24 okay so as we move through the tuning process uh, we'll keep an eye on the fuel pressure and we'll keep coming back to this table and and you know at specific points update it with the correct feed forward number and we'll get some shape into it as we go through um, it'll be pr pretty terrible because it's a long way out at upper fuel levels so um, you know we'll see the fuel pressure get out of control and we'll have to come back and update this uh, it'll force us to do that because uh, the system's not not coping with the bad feed forward numbers all right so you can hear the engines idling quite happily um, and we virtually haven't done anything with the idle control tuning on this that's pretty much straight off the start file and in most cases those same numbers do for most engines 
So, all right. So we'll go to our boost page. All right. And I suppose in reality we can get started. Control. See, we've got a save here. So Control S on the keyboard. And we'll just save it to the same file. And again, I've got the dyno set up at 2000, so I can in fourth gear basically accelerate away. I'm looking what's going on with everything. Problem there. Not sure what happened there. Something going on with the dyno. So we're holding 2000 revs now, and you can see I'm at about 32% pedal. All right, and my boost control is trying to do something to try and achieve the boost, uh, but we'll just quietly add some more fuel via our pedal. Pedal's coming up. Our lambda, see our lambda estimate and aim are very similar now. We're at lambda two. All right, our, of course, our boost aim is still zero because we haven't got to our fifty microliters but you can see as I'm adding fuel we're getting more and more richer and richer and now my boost aim is coming up all right and as we start to make boost you'll see the lambdas flattening off and here comes the boost the integrals chasing it up and I'm now flat applying 50 micro Okay, we're back. Had a small glitch there. Uh, so here's our run again. And as we discussed, we were still quite lean. and But our boost wasn't on its aim either. So that would actually make it leaner anyway. So uh, we know we need to put more fuel in. But for now, what we probably should concentrate on is let's get uh, the boost control a little bit better. We want the boost to be on its aim so we might as well tune the uh, 2000 rpm 50 milligram uh, 80 kpa aim sight in fact it didn't quite go to 80 here did it let's have a look why that is boost aim main uh, well, the reason it didn't go to 80 is because we weren't quite at 50 milligrams so here's our boost aim main you can see it here let me just make it larger so here's our sight, and see, because we've got zero aim, zero at 40, well, that means we'd have to be right over 50 to, um, or right on 50 to give you that exact boost aim of 80. So what I might do just to show what you could do in this case is I'll just add a sight at 45, just to prove a point here, 45 milligrams. We just don't want to aim for too much boost at very low fuel masses because uh, we can overspeed the, not really overspeed the turbo, but tighten the turbo up too, too much uh, and restrict it, the exhaust flow. So we're only going at 2000, so we can just go here and we'll make that 80 there. So now we'll do that one more time. We'll get a nice consistent aim of 80 kPa and we'll allow, just F6 this back, you can see what's happening here. The uh, integral is quietly winding in to bring the boost control up, to bring the boost, uh, close the veins enough to, to make the boost. So our feed forward table number is too small. See that's 64. The control's currently at 74 and it's still not make, meeting the aim. The integral's wound in 5. The proportional's doing 5. So we'll just leave all those things for now, but we can see we're going to, we can easily see we need to add, we're going to need at least 74 in the feed forward table. We hadn't made our aim, so we're going to need more than that. I'm going to guess and say we're going to put in 80 as our starting point for 50 milligrams of fuel. And I uh, might just drop that. Yeah, we'll give that a go anyway. So feed forward main. So here's our number of 62. So what I'm going to do, if you have got this um, feed forward shape, um, and that is, you know, if it is going to be close to what you want, rather than, I mean, this shape is the way the way that this is, uh, the the numbers tend in this in this 
feed forward table again I'll just make that larger for you so you can see that rough shape then rather than add 20 numbers or 18 numbers at this one location why don't we just go control A and maybe add 15 numbers so 15 shift plus all right so now we bought that site to 77 so I still don't think that'll be enough but let's have a look we're going to actually add a, a fraction more fuel we'll put in the exact 50 this time uh, make sure I get my foot to the floor on the pedal and we'll go from there all right control s to get rid of all those little diamonds and pressing T to get the turn the pause off and F6 so that we can see it all happening again all right so here we go let's wait for the dyno to grab you can see me applying pedal here the moment the integral is pulling way out on the boost control because we're making more than what we want in fact that's a bit of a, a false here comes the integral way back in and I'll just apply the fuel the rest of the way so now we're at a hundred All right. okay so just press T All right, let's have a look so we can see we haven't made our aim our boost control number is at 84 our feed forward point was 76 our integral has probably hit the clamp let me have a look at that integral maximum yeah see we've got a maximum of five at that point I won't get into that in too much detail yet either way uh, we haven't made our aim our lambda is not too rich uh, we need to bring our feed forward table up to at least 83 going to be more because we're still 10 kpa away, away from our aim uh, we've got our fuel mass 49.9 so that's our 50 milligrams going in let me see I'm team viewing to the dyno let's see if it's still there yep we made our 240 newton meters you can see that let me close this up a bit hopefully you can see that all right and uh, so let's give it another go we might the boost control feed forward is one of the you know larger tasks to do with with uh, tuning so it's better to to keep keep on top of it and just keep chipping away when you get that opportunity so you can see the arrows here we're at that location did I oh no we did do the right table all right so I'm going to control a did I do the wrong table before no uh, 80 kPa f6 make so you guys can see that so I can push the space bar there's the site we're at 50 milligrams the feed forward was 77 let's just flick back out of there and have a look okay so you oh, it's a small bit of interpolation there so it's 75 in real terms uh, the control went to 82 it still didn't make its aim so it's still 10 kpo away so I'm going to guess we're going to need a number around 86 so we'll flick back over here F6 so let's just maybe pull the whole table up by oh, 8 or 9 so control A 9 shift plus and up the whole table comes by that control S F6 uh, right there's no let I mean while we're here let's have a quick look at the fuel pressure and make sure that's under control here's our aim in green and our red it's following along not bad it's a little bit noisy but it's not too bad just the the way that this system works it uh, that's a little bit much proportional I can see that but it in general terms it's following reasonably and it's not having to put a lot of integral in so we're in the ballpark I'm not going to chase that now if it was out a long way had a lot of integral to keep it right we'd, we'd update the feed forward table a bit on that we go back to our boost uh, so that's all under control lambda's lean's not got hot exhaust temp 
we're, we're okay so let's do it again so pull, push T to unfreeze it and away we go so I'm just going to get straight into it so our boost pressure straight on aim now look at it it's just exactly on the number the integrals keeping it right everything's good we're at lambda 2 because we're actually making more boost now so we're quite lean and uh, I'm looking across and we're making that same re reasonably similar torque which is quite interesting let me just pause that so we've gone up 10 kPa on boost I mean that's 1.15 pound of boost and let me show you all right and still 240 Newton meters so the power that's showing that the power is determined by the fuel because we haven't actually put any more fuel in it we just put boost in it the fueling was the same okay so if you look over here where's our fuel mass it's right on yeah near enough to 50 didn't squeeze the pedal quite enough see our turbocharger is doing 113,000 revs okay so that's looking good that's a really nice figure now uh, we're the feed forward still not quite right our feed forward was 85 at that point and the integral pushed three more percent duty in to make the control 88 to give us exactly the number after so the correct feed forward number for 50 milligrams of fuel mass at 2000 revs for a boost aim of 80 so looking here 2000 revs a fuel mass of 50 uh, at an aim of 80 let me click over so you can see that there's the 80 we're in the 80 kPa aim spot so to get 80 kPa at that fuel mass we need let's quickly go back and check we actually need a number of 89 all right it's actually oscillating up and down there a bit so I'm gonna undershoot it just by a fraction and space bar so we'll just make that 88. All right, I'm going to backspace that. Give us our uh, known good point. All right. All right, so everything's looking good. So at this point, uh, add more fuel. Fuel pressure is under control. Boost is under control. We're really lean. We're at lambda 2. We can take a significant amount more fuel. So let's make a good size jump now. We'll, go, we'll jump 20 milligrams and we'll aim for 70 as our maximum amount of fuel so I'm going over to here here so this is over to my fuel mass worksheet and here we are this is our fuel mass limit I'll just f6 that right so we're at 2000 I'll just make all of it the same so I'm going to go 70 T right now back to our boost which is f7 all right unpause the data so now when I get to 100% pedal I'm going to have 70 milligrams of fuel. Lambda's going to change. Power's going to change significantly. And hopefully the fuel pressure will be okay. Uh, again, I've actually got that. Let me have a look. Have I got that alarm set up for integral? Where is it? High fuel pump integral. All right, it's not turned on. Let me turn that on. So this was in an earlier webinar. If we get any more than 25% um, percent integral to keep our fuel pressure right, that's something serious. Let me drop that down to 8 just to, to um, show what that might look like if it goes off. So if it's having to put 8% in, integral in, 8% duty more, then it means we should go have a look at that and update it that's probably a little low anyway we'll see what happens uh, so away we go we still got actually yeah now our feed for no that's it we're into it So we can see everything's looking good. We've got our boost there. It's reasonably under control. Our lambda's a bit richer. And our integral's fixing our boost. And it's not quite able to do any more because I've clamped it. We'll just press T and have a look. Okay, so 
So our lambda, quite a lot richer now. Let's have a look and see if we're putting in the fuel we wanted to. 68, have I, am I still a little, you know why, it's because of the slope on the pedal, on the nominal table. Let me go and fix that now, just because I'm not squeezing the pedal right through the, um, right through the carpet to get exactly 100%. You see, it's not until I get all the way to 100% that I get 100% of my fuel limit main. So I'm just going to square that off so that any time I go above 90% pedal, I'm going to get 100% of my nominal. All right, and you can see our lambda estimate and our lambda actual are reasonably similar. They're still not absolutely perfect, but they're pretty good. Okay. All right, so let's go back. I'll actually just quickly do that again so we can work with the right numbers. F7 across to our boost. We'll get rid of this. We don't need that. Alright, so now we should be getting our 100. Yeah, we're getting our 70 milligrams. Our boost's climbing up. And it's probably going to hit the integral limit. But there we go anyway. Alright, so pause that data. And our fuel mass is exactly 70. Lambda's still fine. Let's have a look, see what power we made. All right, so we jumped. I was clicking on there to get it to read. So, I don't know, it's something like 340 or something, 320. Um, yeah, 80 Newton meters for our 20 milligrams. It's a good jump. So, all right, so back over to here. So our feed forward for our boost control is still not right. Uh, we're 5 kPa short, so just under a pound of boost short of what we want. And so we'll come over here to our feed forward table. We'll go F6. And right, so we're right on site. That's exactly what we want to be whenever we're doing some good tuning. We want to be exactly on site. Uh, so we're at 70 milligrams, 2,000 revs. And this is the the feed forward number that it's going to be using, or very close to it. All right, so yeah, there it is, 68. The actual control's at 73. It's still not enough, so I'm going to make that 75 back over on this table. See, push the space bar. There it is, 70 milligrams. So I'm going to go to 75. I'll make that F6. Let's look at the numbers. We did the 50. It was 88. This makes sense to be 75. The number's going down. This number here, that's not going to be 75, it's going to be something in the middle, so let's make it hmm, something like maybe 81. Alright, I might, uh, we're not going to backspace those yet, because we don't know they're exactly accurate. But what I can do is um, take a bit of a guess in between. Let me check the fuel pressure while we're here. Okay, so yeah, we can see that we've got an integral component. I'll just F6 this for you. So our integrals wound up 5.5% to get our aim. Our feed forward was 29 and we really want to be about 34. So F6 back again. F7 to get across to our feed forward table. There we go. F6. So we want that number to be about 34. Okay, and generally numbers above there are going to be at least 34. After you've done a few of these tables, you'll get to know the shape approximately. So we kind of have a bit of a slope up. Now we'll highlight all of it. Control C. Just go over Control V, Control B, and just paste some of that there and I'll do a little bit of smoothing remember we're only getting really one point here so we'll just do a little bit of smoothing to get things roughly in line for when we do some other sites later control s All right, so that's our feed forward table updated for the fuel pressure and the next time we check that we're going to um, 
that should be a lot better okay all right it's probably a good time to have a look at the ignition or sorry, not the ignition the injection timing remember as I said you want to kind of make some boost get the fueling right check the fuel pressure get that right check the fuel timing then kind of get to the next level of boost and rotate round, adding boost, adding fuel, checking your your fuel timing across, you know, as you go. So we can do that here. Uh, if we go across, I can press F7 to bring me back up to my main tuning sheets. So here's a quite a reasonably flat timing table that I put in prior to starting the webinar. All right. So the trend is, if you remember previous previous uh, trainings, that we're going to have a relatively low fuel timing number at small pulse widths and then the longer the pulse widths getting the longer well the earlier we need to light the uh, or start injecting the fuel so let's um, let's have a go at that now so what I'll do is we'll do a test with it at its current setting our boost feed forward's been updated so that should work okay we'll keep an eye on that um, so what I might do just to see where we're at and to get a power measurement we'll just do one test there now obviously if you're kind of getting into the tuning side and you're well down you'll be doing well down the path you'll be doing ramp runs but for now we'll just do a static test to give you the idea I'm just going to go to full throttle here. I'm just keeping an eye on my aim. Make sure that's right. Alright, I'm at 100% pedal. My aim's right. My lambda's okay. Alright, and everything seems to be sta static. And I have on the dyno just 345 Newton meters. Let's just pause that. I can show you that. Alright, so you can see where the line is there. It was 3, 345. Okay. I pressed the space bar and we had 8 degrees. I can see here if I have a look, I'll just F6 on here and go through some of the stuff. What I might do is get rid of, get rid of the post timing off here and we might get rid of we're using just a one pilot at the moment and uh, it's actually pilot number two so you can see we have our main timing starting at eight degrees before top dead center and finishing at minus 2.8 so what we can do is uh, based on experience that's a it's close but uh, maybe a little bit late sort of what we find is that somewhere after top dead set sorry somewhere around top dead center initially at least is around this kind of power level is a good place to have the injection timing finishing but the, the dyno will tell the story so what we might do is we'll just unfreeze that again f6 we should do just the way we would do it in petrol land and that's just add timing at the appropriate spot while you're under load and watch the dyno so we were around 70 milligrams from memory so we can just swipe it over here I'll just bring it up onto load there so I'm sitting right there 3 shift plus and or three minus three minus and I can simply watch and I can see on the dyno graph there's not much happening there all right it didn't change so we're pretty close okay, and you can see here this is me moving it around it was around this kind of time here that it lined up as having peak torque but it but it really didn't move that much 
so I'm going to leave it at this setting here and so our, our timing number for this particular volume of fuel which if we have a look at 70 milligrams Alt F5 need to unlock our layouts so layout right click unlock F6 Alt F5 because I'm using the F5 key to do one of my shortcuts I have to use the alt key to get it to do what's normally our properties okay because I just want to scale this fuel mass a bit better for you bring that up to 120 alright so we can see we're in a nice steady fuel mass our boost aim is now right on our aim and our actual boost are right on since we updated that feed forward table we can see here we've got our pilot and our main and I'm moving the main timing in and out and you can see the pulse width's consistent and so we're moving that around by moving the table numbers and I'm looking at the dyno to see where maximum power is. All right. So I'm happy that that's okay. I'm just going to go back one step here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Control S. So at our 70 milligram site at 2,000 revs, I'm actually okay with that number eight backspace. All right. So obviously, the more points you do, the more accurate you'll get it. But just like petrol tuning, when you're kind of in a three, four, five degree window, then of of what the ideal number is, then you tend to not get a lot of response from the output of the engine so you can you know put as much time into this as you like but we'll get on and go for the next next fuel mass so uh, to me our next path is to uh, chuck some more fuel in it and make sure our boost feed forward number for that higher fuel number is correct so I'm going to go over to our fuel mass fuel mass limit main and we'll just simply go control A 90 enter so now we've got a aim of or a maximum amount of fuel of 90 milligrams and we're still going to aim for our same 80 kPa and we'll do that test and see how we go I'm going to get my foot out of it if it goes richer than lambda 1.15 is my magic number um, but somewhere around lambda 1.2 it's going to be um, 1.1 to 1.2 is going to be sm start to get smoking so then what I might quickly do while we're here is show you the smoke table and just show us show what we can do to fix that if it does get to that point so anyway let's give it a go Alright, so we're way under there, and I didn't get to um, full pedal. You can actually see what milligrams. So we are ex quite confusing. You've got to <laughs> watch these two lambdas. I can take the lambda estimate away, but I kind of need it later. So I'm going to leave it there. So, yeah, we went down nearly to lambda 1, 109. Definitely too much fuel if we're looking for nice, clean operation. My pedal got to 87. I nearly d delivered all the fuel. So at 85 milligrams, that's the limit of the fuel that I can put in at that particular boost level. All right, so it's not quite on aim. And the reason for that is, is that we haven't updated the feed forward table for that new, um, that new aim amount of fuel. Either way, I just might just dim. I'll go flat and we'll, um, we'll have a look and see just how rich it, it's going to get. It's all uh, going into a big muffler and up onto the roof so the neighbours are the ones that are going to notice the smoke. Alright so we'll put all of it in so we're right on lambda 1 Alert. there. Min and lambda. There you go. There's my minimum lambda alarm going off. I'm not sure if you could hear the uh, alarm giving me a hard time so I can just push A to acknowledge that T to pause it 
And so there's a couple of things I could fix at this point. The first one is the feed forward for 90 milligrams is wrong for the boost control. See my feed forward's 54. The boost control went to 60 before we got to the clamp on the integral. Now I could lift the clamp on that, but it, this is just uh, helping you to understand what we need to do to um, to put these numbers in. So I'm going to need at least a number of 60, uh, probably more like 62, 63 at that point. So we might just do that now. F6. And click over here, push the space bar, that goes to the point, 90 milligrams of fuel. Uh, so I'm going to put in 63 there. Okay, and if that one was 63, then that number needs to be uh, something like maybe 70. Okay, alright, so that's sort of the boost control part. Just go back here. I pushed T inadvertently, so let's just come back now. In fact, why don't we rerun that just to get that right? So we were too rich there. This is actually going to be a good demonstration for you to see how you can clean up your emissions. You can leave the same amount of fuel there, and if you want to, not the emissions, the smoke, if you want to clean the smoke up, make some more boost. So all going well, if it's successful, we're going to make pretty much 7 kPa more boost, which is almost exactly 1 pound, slightly over 1 pound more boost. So we'll just drop it in and press T, and let's see what that does to the Lambda. It's actually virtually going to make it the identical power, it's just going to clean it up. There it is, we're already on aim. Let's get all the way flat. All right, so we've cleaned up a little bit, about 10% or 8%. Right. Min Lambda. Then my alarm went off because we went too, too rich. All right, so that run there, we added 7 kPa, and our Lambda went to 109, which is still too rich. And on the previous one, we were at 102. So we picked up oh, you know, 0506 Lambda uh, leaner for our little bit of extra boost. All right, so you get the idea. Now, let's assume you, you've done all your tuning, you've got the whole map done and it's running like this, uh, or you've got it running you know, at Lambda 1.2, but you get into a spot where the, it's not making the boost that you aimed for, and there's lots of reasons that can happen. Quick gear changes, first gear acceleration, the boost doesn't build as quick. There can be all sorts of reasons that the airflow, etc., is not what you tuned it at. So how do we stop it getting too rich? We can see that if the boost's not there, that it gets rich. The fuel goes in proportional to the pedal. Uh, so if you're flat and the boost's not there, the way we've got it now, it'll just run rich. So to stop you running rich when you don't want to do that, we use that smoke limiting one of these two tables. So let's uh, this table, the fuel mixture minimum's the easy one to use. You can see currently we're at 1300, uh, our milligrams of air per cycle is 1300 at that spot we've stopped the cursor at. Alright, so at, at that point we, we're we quite close on our estimate versus our, our, our aim, our estimate lambda versus our actual lambda. So we'll just call them the same for now. And, uh, but what, we just to show you the, how this table works, I can now aim for a minimum lambda to be 1.2, which should have me smoke free. So if I go real simple here, just click into this table, 1.2t. So that whole table is now 1.2. Control S, push T to start it. And let's go and do the same thing again now. So we're going to make no changes at all other than limiting, using that uh, fuel mixture minimum table now. And we come, and there's our exhaust lambda estimate pegged at 1.2. You can see that there. All right, and now will be a good time to show you all those source channels. All right, now because the injector cows aren't perfect, we're seeing 
the actual lambda hovering slightly above but now you can see how you could tune that to make the actual lambda what you want so you could go into this table here and wherever it was a little lean say here all right so at that flow you could make that um, a little richer in the in this table all right okay so our fuel mass source this has all been going on actually and I haven't pointed it out see here it's gone the fuel mass source is the fuel mixture minimum as we're coming down here the fuel mass source is the pedal so that's me and then you'll see as soon as it goes to that flat line boom the fuel mixture minimum is now what is deriving the fuel to the engine it's what's deciding how much fuel the engines getting so if you look up here the fuel mass unlimited is the red line so that's coming from that table so the fuel mass unlimited table multiplied by my pedal position and that's why the the curves look the same and then right at that point there that all lines up is where the ECU is calculated that it's going to be richer than lambda 1.2 and it starts clipping the fuel from coming in and so our fuel mass now is not what the unlimited it's not coming from that limit table it's now coming from the calculation from this fuel mixture minimum table which is effectively a smoke table okay all right so one last thing before I sign off today I'll show you actually show you how the, the fuel mass smoke table works so here you'll see we have a number of 80 milligrams near enough being delivered via this table so I could go into the fuel mass uh, fuel sorry the <laughs> fuel mass limit smoke table trying to get all these names right so when we get to this side here I'm gonna limit the fuel and I'll make it 50 so I could put a random number like 50 there and as we approach this site you'll see the fuel uh, come out and the engine obviously will lose power and you'll also see the fuel mass source will switch to smoke and uh, everything will you know and you will you'll see it all happen so anyway let's have a look so I'll go back to boost F7 and press T here alright so off we go we're on our pedal our fuel mass source here is pedal Okay. and see there's fuel mixture minimum oh we haven't hit the smoke table why is that let me have a look demonstration fail she might have been coming close there's only one reason and that's the fact that interpolation wise it can't be getting close enough yet yeah, it's because of the 900s all around yeah okay half of you will have already worked that out F6 because of the interpolation this number here around here is so high it's unless it's exactly on that site it's never going to work so now um, that will work oh, actually yeah I've, like I said earlier I, I kinda like doing my main driving from this this uh, worksheet here I can see all my criticals I haven't got exhaust temp on it at this moment because I know it's not going to be high but uh, when I am worried about that I can put that on but so now this time you'll see the smoke table come in there it is all right so we're actually meeting our aim boost so we're at the same boost as we always were but now the power will be way down and uh, you can see where is our fuel mass is way down at 50 all right which is exactly what we typed in so I press T okay all right and that 50 milligrams knocked the lambda way back to here let's have a look what power we'll see uh, there there all right back down to 240 Newton meters all right get the idea I think that's a good introduction that's the basics 
So you simply do that process that you've seen right there and do that at all your RPM. Um, you know, right through, you'll start to do ramp runs and get it so that when the thing's making its proper boost, it's you're delivering the fuel to give you the fuel mixture aim that you want. And uh, then you can m falsely make lower boost by making the boost aim lower and then using the sm and then configuring the smoke table to clip the fuel when that happens. Um, and that, you know that's the the basics of it. Obviously, there's a bit of work in it, um, but I hope you've got the basics from this webinar. Anyway, we'll do another one soon, and we'll hope to catch you then. Thanks for listening.